subatomic particle Higgs boson, also known as the God particle. The particle is believed to be crucial in the formation of the universe. The Higgs is referred to as the God particle because the field it produces gives atoms its mass. The Higgs is the last missing piece of the standard model, the theory that describes the basic building blocks of the universe. The other 11 particles predicted by the model have been found and finding the Higgs would validate the model. We have a discovery. We have discovered a new particle, a boson. Most probably a Higgs boson, but we have to find out which kind of Higgs boson this is. Does it have the properties which we expect from the standard model? If not, what are its properties and where do they point to? But at least we know now that we can soon close part of the, of the chapter of the standard model. On Wednesday, CERN scientists announced that their two experiments in search of the God particle, ATLAS and CMS, have both reported measurements of the Higgs. ATLAS announced a 5 sigma signal and CMS will announce a 4.9 sigma signal of a new particle with a mass of 126.5 giga electronic volts GeV and 125.2 GeV respectively. CERN scientists discovered the God particle while smashing particles at a very high speed in the Large Hadron Collider. The newfound particle has a mass that's around 130 times that of a proton, making it the most massive particle that exists. Scientists believe that in the first billionth of a second after the Big Bang, the universe was in a gigantic soup of particles racing around at the speed of light without any mass to speak of. It was through their interaction with the Higgs field that they gained mass and eventually formed the universe. Bureau Report, DD News. Well, British physicist Peter Higgs, who propounded the concept 48 years ago, said that the experiment will open new avenues to understand dark matter and cosmology at large. Well, for me personally, it's, it's just the confirmation of, of something that I did 48 years ago, and it's very satisfying to be to be proved right in in, in some way. From the point of view of, of uh, future physics, well, it's it seems to me that it's in the, in one way it's the end end of of uh, 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 an era in that it seems to complete the standard model. But the more important thing is the way that. I think, as Rolf Hoyer said, it, 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 it's the study of it will, will lead on to what lies beyond the standard model of physics, which we hope will have uh, more interesting connections with, with cosmology, the dark matter problem and that sort of thing. Well, to discuss uh, this fascinating discovery, uh, joining us in the studio is Professor Ravi Shankar, Professor, Department of Physics, IIT Delhi. Uh, thanks very much, Professor, for joining us. First of all, what uh, what is a boson, and you know what is a Higgs boson? Okay, you see, the most important thing that we should know is that uh, particles can carry something called intrinsic angular momentum. That is, even if a particle has no size, it can carry an intrinsic angular momentum in quantum mechanics. And this intrinsic angular momentum can either come in integer multiples of the Planck's constant, h bar, okay. or it can be half odd integer, like half h bar, 3 by 2 h bar, etc., etc. Okay. Now, the mysterious thing in nature is that the integer particles, which are called bosons, they have entirely different properties from the half odd integer particles, which are called fermions. Okay. For example, electron is a fermion proton is a fermion, neutron is a fermion, light that we see, photon, the quantized light, that is a boson, Higgs, which has been discovered, is a boson. Okay. They have entirely different properties. Fermions obey what is called as exclusion principle. Two of them cannot have the sit in the same state, whereas okay. bosons are like people who like to come together. They all like to sit in the same state. So, okay. a boson is an integer spin particle mm -hmm. with a very special property called Bose-Einstein statistics. That is what they obey. Right. So, but, but would it be right then to say that Bose-Einstein uh, statistics was like the source code or something, you know, to uh, to all quantum uh, uh, fields that we are discuss uh, discussing now? Yeah. See, what Bose did was uh, something absolutely fundamental and goes beyond the discovery of Higgs. This is mm -hmm. extraordinarily important, but what Bose did was something even more fundamental because uh, it was the beginning of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics was not even firmly established. 
and both realized that uh, these, especially for the photons, what he was working on, they obey a very entirely different kind of statistics, the way you count the states. He was the first person to do it. Okay. In fact, the credit should almost go completely to Bose because what Einstein did was to translate it when okay. he sent his manuscript to Einstein. Okay. That is the basis of a large number of phenomena, superconductivity, superfluidity, Bose-Einstein condensation. Right. Okay. And the way we understand... But Bose the, always considered Einstein as his guru. I mean, in that interaction period that they had, after he said he published that those six-page uh, six document which Einstein translated. Yeah, you see, because uh, first thing was uh, Einstein was a father figure, and he is, of course, the greatest uh, scientist of the century, whatever, of probably many, many centuries. And uh, to get a recognition from Einstein was an incredible feat. Mm -hmm. And when Bose submitted his second paper, actually Einstein made a few corrections and modifications and he wrote his foot, foot, footnote. Right. So because of the encouragement that he received from Einstein, and you should know that actually Bose uh, translated Einstein's paper on relativity into English. Into okay. So for that yeah. reason, out of... Uh, I thought he translated uh, to Bengali. Bengali, right, yeah. absolutely. And uh, th for that reason, he considered him as guru. I mean, both studied almost everything by himself through the original books, you know, so for Fantastic. that reason. Fantastic. But the discovery certainly belongs to Bose. I mean, okay. we should be very clear about that. Yeah. Now, Higgs says that it's the end of an era, the standard model now, I mean, probably validated, and the start of a new era. But what, uh, what do we expect from this new era? What is the scope? See, the standard model was propounded sometime in around 1980 or even 1960s actually, sorry, mm. not 1980, 67, 68 is when Weinberg and Salam gave the model. And at that time, uh, everything was very poorly understood, neither the strong interactions nor the weak interactions. Then slowly people started piecing the, all the pieces of the puzzle together, put them together. And uh, as you are announced just now, there are all these quarks which have been seen. And mm. the top quark was seen sometime around 1995 and people heaved a sigh of relief. The only thing remaining was the Higgs boson to complete this puzzle. Right. And uh, the funny thing about Higgs is uh, the theory does not tell you where to look for it. Yes. Okay. For, for example, for top quark, people had a very clear idea where to look for it and how to look for it. But for Higgs, people did not have an idea. So it ranged all the way from something like 10 GeV to 1 trillion electron volts. That was the range. Well, so with range. great painstaking effort, people narrowed down to 100 to 150 GeV. And now it has been seen at 125 GeV. We hope that it is the standard model Higgs. Okay. Now this completes this piece of the puzzle, whatever right. we have understood. But other things have cropped up. Okay. For example, people believed that neutrinos are massless. But now we know that neutrinos carry mass. And astrophysical observations have shown that uh, the in the galaxies, for example, the star's period does mm. not correspond to the matter distribution that we know. Okay. In fact, there is much, much more matter than what we see, okay. the invisible matter or the dark matter. Right. And obviously, if we are developing a theory to understand all the fundamental phenomena in nature, forces of nature, we have to know that and we have to go beyond standard matter. model. But if, uh, we'll come back to that. We yeah. just need to take a quick commercial break. Uh, do stay with us. We are discussing this uh, wonderful, fantastic discovery of uh, a particle that's like the Higgs boson. Do stay with us. For a happy and productive life, one needs peace of mind. That is why I chose LIC. LIC adds some magical notes of security to life. Then why go anywhere else? आज तक मैं एक भी ऐसे बच्चे से नहीं मिला who didn't want to fly. And toy planes, they are our most valued possessions. फिर एक दिन हम बड़े हो जाते हैं. We want a lot more speed, thrill, and the ultimate in technology. And of course, गर्व जो महसूस होता है कश्मीर से कन्या कुमारी तक देश की रक्षा करने में. और अपने देश का नाम आसमान से ऊंची ऊंचाइयों तक ले जाने में सारे जहाज से अच्छा Nothing can beat the feeling जब आपका साथ देती हैं दुनिया की सबसे बेहतरीन मशीनें and the best professionals in the world Thankfully I have been there I know how it feels और अब आपकी बारी है This is Indian Air Force Are you up for it?
Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, Professor Shankar, you know, before the break, we were talking about dark matter, and uh, some estimates say that, what, over 90% of uh, space is basically dark matter. Yeah. Uh, so what can this discovery do to our understanding of dark matter? If uh, the Higgs that we have seen is the standard model Higgs, mm -hmm. then what we can now do is to direct our efforts to find out uh, there are other Higgs particles which are there in the theory which can possibly contribute to the dark matter. We really don't know what constitutes dark matter. Mm -hmm. And then there is this very beautiful theory called supersymmetry, which tries to unify fermions and bosons. So once we start concentrating on looking at them, and if we discover more particles, and uh, some of them, it is generally expected to be neutral particle, the dark matter, okay, something like okay. X, scalar particle, then we may be able to understand. If for some reason it turns out that uh, this Higgs is not the standard model Higgs, Okay. Then uh, standard model may be in trouble, but then this can be a candidate. You know that, right? Right. So that is the whole idea. So, so either way, I think it is. New model. Either it? way, it is a win-win situation. But right. most likely, it is the standard model Higgs that we will right. know in the next. Uh, and we also now years. very privileged to have with us uh, Professor R. P. Tundon, the head of the Department of Physics at Delhi University. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Uh, how would you look at this discovery from, from the point of view first? I mean that uh, if its impact and from the point of view that India has also contributed a great deal to it. Well, no doubt this is one of the uh, landmark discovery after Newton and Einstein, I would say, the very landmark discovery and India has contributed immensely. Mm -hmm. For example, from my university, there are at least five people who are very actively, so they are still there and they are participating in this. There are about four students every year which are going there and we have made some detectors for them. Mm -hmm. Apart from them, Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics, Baba Atomic Research Center, about seven other universities are also directly involved. Punjab right. University is also very much actively involved. Right, and we made some uh, large uh, superconductor magnets and things like that for, for this. No, we have made a large, uh, large scale uh, silicon based detector. Okay. Okay, and calorie matrix, which are measure uh, energy of the particles, not the superconducting magnets. Okay, uh, let's try and understand this, uh, what actually has happened here. Uh, I mean, we understood that, uh, you know, particles that probably travel at the speed of light do not have any mass. Right. So, in contrast to that, what is this new discovery? I mean, how does a, how does a particle gain mass? Well, uh, I'm sure you must have discussed this point. <laughs> but, but we've been uh, discussing other points, but not quite uh, this as yet. <laughs> okay. Well, so one thing is that uh, everything was there in standard model. We knew mm -hmm. everything about. There was one missing link, which was Higgs boson. After the fundamental question, how do we arrive at mass? Okay. What gives you mass? Right. So that uh, missing link was there. So now we understand if the Higgs boson has been discovered, standard model is going to stay there forever, and uh, we are really not concerned about it. Other thing is uh, we have four forces, okay. and the gravitational force is not very well still incorporated and understood. So this will also throw light on we have 12 fundamental particles, four forces. Okay. So if this thing is going to be really confirmed, okay. then there will be a lot of uh, scope to go beyond even the standard model. Okay. So this will definitely throw, well, it's uh, too premature to say what will be the implication, but the Im implications will be enormous, but it cannot be a very right. short range kind of implications. Right, but how does this interaction, Pro Professor Shankar, take place, you know, between uh, the subatomic particles that, you know, suddenly they gain mass? Uh, how does this interaction take place in this field, the Higgs field? See, in principle, you can always give a mass to a particle. It is not as if you cannot write a mass. But the problem in uh, quantum field theory is that if you want to develop a consistent uh, model, consistent theoretical analysis, we need a very important principle. It's a very sacred principle called the gauge principle, gauge invariance. Okay. Now, gauge invariance is known from the time of Maxwell. And uh, the word gauge invariance was coined by Hermann Weyl, a great mathematician. Now, gauge invariance tells us that whatever carries interaction mm -hmm. should be massless. For example, electromagnetic interaction is carried by light, photons. Photons mm -hmm. are massless. It, they travel with the speed of light. Light travels with the speed mm -hmm. of light. Right. Now, we do not know how to build a theory without gauge invariance okay. in quantum field theory. So, when you try to do that, you will only get massless particles which mediate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we know in weak interactions, for example, looking at neutron decay, etc., they are not massless. In fact, they are all very short range forces. Okay. So it was a catch-22 situation. You want the mass, but then you will have to give up gauge invariance. You give up gauge invariance, you don't know what to do with it. Right. The way out of this 
was actually pointed out through what is called as the Higgs mechanism. Okay. Formally, you preserve the gauge invariance in the theory, right. but there is something called spontaneous symmetry breaking that takes place. Okay. The symmetry is not broken in the way you write the action, but by the properties of the vacuum. Vacuum is the ground state okay. and it generates mass. So, the way right. it is generated is you have what is called as a Higgs field. It is the Higgs field that generates the mass okay. and uh, that mass is given to the mediators Fair enough. and there is one particle which is left out which we call as the Higgs. Okay. And that is what we were looking for. So then, Professor yeah. Tundon, if uh, if an object is gaining mass, uh, uh, is it gaining mass constantly, or what? Uh, or is there going to be a f time when it's going to stop? Or? No, it's going to stop somewhere. Right. Yeah. But uh, it, what is that? Is that a definition within the Higgs field itself that it only gains mass? Or because the the theory is that I mean, if this is going to validate the Big Bang theory, mm -hmm. all these planets and stars, etc., are they continuously growing, or what? What is the situation? Well, we can say the universe is expanding. Right. And uh, the mass of Higgs boson is really very large. Uh, that itself is enough. I mean, okay. No, no. The word yes. gaining mass gaining doesn't mass mean that it is growing. not gaining mass. No, 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 no. no, no. Is the it gaining gain, mass not gaining, gaining mass is to acquire a mass. Is to acquire mass. Uh, what was initially massless becomes massive. Okay. And uh, it has become common usage in physics to say it gains mass. Okay. It is not continuously gaining mass. You had a mass once and that's it. That's no, no, it. It is like that. The you particle is there. Mass. Okay. Yeah. Particle is there. Now the Higgs field is there. Right. As soon as it encounters Higgs field, it acquires mass. But that mass so is not So those encounters expanded. are taking place all the time, isn't it? No, no. This. What's it? No, they, don't those encounters take place all the time? Yeah, uh, of course. But the mass is constant after a while. Okay. The it's mass. It's not like ever increasing. Right. No, this I mean the, the the confusion is that these interactions are taking place all the time. The symmetry has been broken. Okay. And once the symmetry is broken, these particles have acquired mass. Okay. Okay. And they continue to retain that mass. It is like you know a magnet. Okay. When you cool it below a certain temperature, initially the magnetic uh, north pole and south pole could have been any direction. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you cool it for whatever reason, the symmetry gets broken and one mm -hmm. direction becomes the north pole, another becomes the south pole. Okay. So, that gets frozen after that. Right. So, that is what happens. So, here. Professor Tandon, uh, now this this only talks about the Big Bang. Yeah. Uh, is that means that there is going to be no other theory that uh, one can, uh, that physics is going to look at uh, well, because of this? Well, people have said that this is just the beginning. Okay. That is what the scientists, the concerned scientists say, this is just the beginning. There will be many more theories. In fact, the physics will undergo some kind of uh, revolutionary changes in certain theories. At, at least Such the as? people, peop yes, people. I mean, the the CERN head has said like this that mm -hmm. this is just the beginning. That's what the, precisely the language is. Right. So uh, then, what? Uh, what? What? If it is the beginning, and uh, that's a question I had asked you earlier. I mean, yeah. and I think we were interrupted by a break. Uh, yeah. What is the future? See, the future is, first of all, we have to understand uh, whatever evidence is coming from astrophysics. There are two kinds of evidence. One is the dark matter, which says that what is visible is only about 4 to 6 percent or whatever. So, there is a vast amount of in matter which we do not know anything about. And even more surprising is what is called as the dark energy. The galaxies are all flying away from each other mm -hmm. with an acceleration, which is not right. expected. The third major challenge actually for us is that he mentioned the four fundamental forces. Right. We have a reasonably good understanding of three fundamental forces. Okay. Gravitational, uh, sorry, electromagnetic, weak and strong. Okay. Gravity, which is the oldest known interaction. Right. Newton, of course, gave us the universal law. We do not know how to incorporate gravity in quantum mechanics. We do not have a quantum field theory of gravity. Until we do that, in fact, any theory of the universe that we may come up with Right. including Big Bang, it is an incomplete theory. Okay. Our Fair understanding enough. will be completely incomplete. And in that direction, we will have to look for new physics, new particles, for example, supersymmetric particles, okay. which are there. Supersymmetry is essential for quantum gravity in string theory, for example. Right. So, the whole world is open for us now. I mean, it's we, we need to take another quick commercial break. There is a lot more to discuss after that. Stay with us. बाल श्रम एक दंडनीय अपराध है यह कानून 14 साल से कम उम्र के किसी भी बच्चे को काम में लगाने से रोकता है बाल श्रम रोकिए बच्चों को काम नहीं पढ़ाई का अधिकार चाहिए उनकी सही जगह स्कूल है यह उनका हक है आज तक मैं एक भी ऐसे बच्चे
किसानों के कंधों से कर्ज का बोझ करने का फैसला